Acute Disseminated Encephalomyelitis, Wikipedia Article Audio Acute Disseminated Encephalomyelitis, or Acute Demyelinating Encephalomyelitis, is a rare autoimmune disease marked by a sudden, widespread attack of inflammation in the brain and spinal cord, as well as causing the brain and spinal cord to become inflamed. ADEM also attacks the nerves of the central nervous system and damages their myelin insulation, which, as a result, destroys the white matter. It is often triggered after the patient has received a viral infection or, perhaps exceedingly rarely specific non-routine vaccinations. ADEM symptoms resemble the symptoms of multiple sclerosis so the disease itself is sorted into the classification of the multiple sclerosis borderline diseases. However, ADEM has several features that distinguish it from MS. Unlike MS, ADEM occurs usually in children and is marked with rapid fever, although adolescents and adults can get the disease too. ADEM consists of a single flare-up whereas MS is marked with several flare UPS, over a long period of time. Relapses following ADEM are reported in up to a quarter of patients, but the majority of these multiphasic presentations following ADEM likely represent MS. ADEM is also distinguished by a loss of consciousness, coma, and death, which is very rare in MS except in severe cases. Signs and Symptoms Causes It affects about 8 per 1 million people per year. Although it occurs in all ages, most reported cases are in children and adolescents, with the average age around 5 to 8 years old. The disease affects males and females almost equally. The mortality rate may be as high as 5%, however, full recovery is seen in 50-75% to 75 of cases with increase in survival rates up to 70-90% to 90 with figures including minor residual disability as well. The average time to recover from ADEM flare UPS is 1-6 to six months. ADEM produces multiple inflammatory lesions in the brain and spinal cord, particularly in the white matter. Usually these are found in the subcortical and central white matter and cortical gray-white junction of both cerebral hemispheres, cerebellum, brainstem, and spinal cord, but periventricular white matter and gray matter of the cortex, thalami, and basal ganglia may also be involved. When a person has more than one demyelinating episode of ADEM, the disease is then called recurrent disseminated encephalomyelitis or multiphasic disseminated encephalomyelitis. Also, a fulminant course in adults has been described. ADEM has an abrupt onset and a monophasic course. Symptoms usually begin 1-3 weeks after infection. Major symptoms include fever, headache, nausea, and vomiting, confusion, vision impairment, drowsiness, seizures and coma. Although initially the symptoms are usually mild, they worsen rapidly over the course of hours to days, with the average time to maximum severity being about four and a half days. Additional symptoms include hemiparesis, paraparesis, and cranial nerve palsies. A preceding antigenic challenge can be identified in approximately two-thirds of people. Viral infections thought to induce ADEM include influenza virus, dengue, enterovirus, measles, mumps, rubella, varicella zoster, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex virus, hepatitis A, and Coxsackie virus, while the bacterial infections include Mycoplasma pneumoniae, Borrelia burgdorferi, Leptospira, and Beta hemolytic streptococci. The only vaccine proven to induce ADEM is the simple form of the rabies vaccine, 
but hepatitis B, pertussis, diphtheria, measles, mumps, rubella, pneumococcus, varicella, influenza, Japanese encephalitis, and polio vaccines have all been implicated. The majority of the studies that correlate vaccination with ADEM onset use small samples or case studies. Large-scale epidemiological studies do not show increased risk of ADEM following vaccination. In rare cases, ADEM seems to follow from organ transplantation. An upper bound for the risk of ADEM from measles vaccination, if it exists, can be estimated to be 10 per million, which is far lower than the risk of developing ADEM from an actual measles infection which is about 1 per 1,000 cases. For a rubella infection, the risk is 1 per 5,000 cases. Some early vaccines, later shown to have been contaminated with host animal CNS tissue, had ADEM incident rates as high as 1 in 600. Diagnosis Currently, the commonly accepted international standard for the clinical case definition is the one published by the International Pediatric MS Study Group, Revision 2007. While ADEM and MS both involve autoimmune demyelination, they differ in many clinical, genetic, imaging, and histopathological aspects. Some authors consider MS and its borderline forms to constitute a spectrum, differing only in chronicity, severity, and clinical course, while others consider them discreetly different diseases. Differential Diagnosis Typically, ADEM appears in children following an antigenic challenge and remains monophasic. Nevertheless, ADEM does occur in adults and can also be clinically multiphasic. Problems for differential diagnosis increase due to the lack of agreement for a definition of multiple sclerosis. If MS were defined just by the separation in time and space of the demyelinating lesions as McDonald did, it would not be enough to make a difference, as some cases of ADEM satisfy these conditions. Therefore, some authors propose to establish the separation line in the shape of the lesions around the veins, being therefore perivenous versus confluent demyelination. The pathology of ADEM is very similar to that of MS with some differences. The pathological hallmark of ADEM is perivenular inflammation with limited sleeves of demyelination. Nevertheless, MS like plagues can appear. Multiple sclerosis Plagues in the white matter in MS are sharply delineated, while the glial scar in ADEM is smooth. Axons are better preserved in ADEM lesions. Inflammation in ADEM is widely disseminated and ill-defined, and finally, lesions are strictly perivenous, while in MS they are disposed around veins, but not so sharply. Multiphasic Disseminated Encephalomyelitis Nevertheless, the CO occurrence of perivenous and confluent demyelination in some individuals suggests pathogenic overlap between acute disseminated encephalomyelitis and multiple sclerosis and misclassification even with biopsy or even post-mortem ADEM in adults can progress to MS. Acute Hemorrhagic Leukoencephalitis when the person has more than one demyelinating episode of ADEM, the disease is then called recurrent disseminated encephalomyelitis or multiphasic disseminated encephalomyelitis. It has been found that anti-MOG autoantibodies are related to this kind of ADEM. Treatment Another variant of ADEM in adults has been described also related to anti-MOG autoantibodies, has been named fulminant disseminated encephalomyelitis, and it has been reported to be clinically ADEM, but showing MS-like lesions on autopsy.
it has been classified inside the anti-MOG associated inflammatory demyelinating diseases. Acute hemorrhagic leukoencephalitis, also known as acute necrotizing encephalopathy, acute hemorrhagic encephalomyelitis, acute necrotizing hemorrhagic leukoencephalitis, Weston Hurst syndrome, or Hurst's disease, is a hyperacute and frequently fatal form of ADEM. AL is relatively rare, it is seen in about 2% of ADEM cases, and is characterized by necrotizing vasculitis of venules and hemorrhage, and edema. Death is common in the first week and overall mortality is about 70%, but increasing evidence points to favorable outcomes after aggressive treatment with corticosteroids, immunoglobulins, cyclophosphamide, and plasma exchange. About 70% of survivors show residual neurological deficits, but some survivors have shown surprisingly little deficit considering the magnitude of the white matter affected. This disease has been occasionally associated with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, malaria, septicemia associated with immune complex deposition, methanol poisoning, and other underlying conditions. Also anecdotal association with MS has been reported. No controlled clinical trials have been conducted on ADEM treatment, but aggressive treatment aimed at rapidly reducing inflammation of the CNS is standard. The widely accepted first-line treatment is high doses of intravenous corticosteroids, such as methylprednisolone or dexamethasone followed by three six weeks of gradually lower oral doses of prednisolone. Patients treated with methylprednisolone have shown better outcomes than those treated with dexamethasone. Oral tapers of less than three weeks duration show a higher chance of relapsing, and tend to show poorer outcomes. Other anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive therapies have been reported to show beneficial effect such as plasmapheresis, high doses of intravenous immunoglobulin, mitoxantrone, and cyclophosphamide. These are considered alternative therapies, used when corticosteroids cannot be used or fail to show an effect. There is some evidence to suggest that patients may respond to a combination of methylprednisolone and immunoglobulins if they fail to respond to either separately in a study of 16 children with ADEM, 10 recovered completely after high-dose methylprednisolone, one severe case that failed to respond to steroids recovered completely after 4 IG, the five most severe cases with Adam and severe peripheral neuropathy were treated with combined high-dose methylprednisolone and immunoglobulin, 2. Remained paraplegic, 1 had motor and cognitive handicaps, and 2 recovered. A recent review of IVIG treatment of ADEM found that 70% of children showed complete recovery after treatment with IVIG, or IVIG plus corticosteroids. A study of IVIG treatment in adults with ADEM showed that IVIG seems more effective in treating sensory and motor disturbances, while steroids seem more effective in treating impairments of cognition, consciousness, and rigor. This same study found one subject, a 71-year-old man who had not responded to steroids, that responded to an IVIG treatment 58 days after disease onset. Prognosis Full recovery is seen in 50 to 70 percent of cases, ranging to 70 to 90 percent recovery with some minor residual disability, average time to recover is 1 to 6 months. The mortality rate may be as high as 5 percent 10 percent dot. Poorer outcomes are associated with unresponsiveness to steroid therapy, unusually severe neurological symptoms, or sudden onset. Children tend to have more favorable outcomes than adults, and cases presenting without fevers tend to have poorer outcomes.
the latter effect may be due to either protective effects of fever, or that diagnosis and treatment is sought more rapidly when fever is present. Motor Deficits ADEM can progress to MS. It will be considered MS if some lesions appear in different times and brain areas. Acute Disseminated Encephalomyelitis at Myelitis.org Acute Disseminated Encephalomyelitis at NIHS Office of Rare Diseases Acute Disseminated Encephalomyelitis Information Page at Nines Information for Parents about Acute Disseminated Encephalomyelitis Residual motor deficits are estimated to remain in about 8 to 30 percent of cases, the range in severity from mild clumsiness to ataxia and hemiparesis. Patients with demyelinating illnesses, such as MS, have shown cognitive deficits even when there is minimal physical disability. Research suggests that similar effects are seen after ADEM but that the deficits are less severe than those seen in MS. A study of six children with ADEM were tested for a range of neurocognitive tests after an average of 3.5 years of recovery. All six children performed in the normal range on most tests, including verbal IQ and performance IQ, but performed at least one standard deviation below age norms in at least one cognitive domain such as complex attention, short-term memory, and internalizing behavior slash affect. Group means for each cognitive domain were all within one standard deviation of age norms, demonstrating that, as a group, they were normal. These deficits were less severe than those seen in similar aged children with a diagnosis of MS. Another study compared 19 children with a history of ADEM, of which 10 were 5 years of age or younger at the time and 9 were older to 19 matched controls. Scores on IQ tests and educational achievement were lower for the young onset ADEM group compared to the late onset and control groups, while the late onset ADEM children scored lower on verbal processing speed. Again. All groups means were within one standard deviation of the controls, meaning that while effects were statistically reliable, the children were as a whole, still within the normal range. There were also more behavioral problems in the early onset group, although there is some suggestion that this may be due, at least in part, to the stress of hospitalization at a young age. Neurocognitive Research Experimental Allergic Encephalomyelitis Experimental Allergic Encephalomyelitis is an animal model of CNS inflammation and demyelination frequently used to investigate potential MS treatments. An acute monophasic illness, EAE is far more similar to ADEM than MS.